hi guys how are you all and welcome to another video by me nikki where i'm bringing you the pisces full moon which is happening on the 18th of september 2022 so we are now entering the 12th house again with the sixth house which is activated when Pisces and Virgos always meet up, which is, you know, twice a year, more or less, whether it's a new moon or full moon, it's like things start to like really either come back to earth or we have to really get in tune with what's going on within us, what's getting, what's going on within our emotions. These two signs are, I feel personally, are very underestimated in a way because you know they're mutable but they're pretty like generally on a general 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 of the signs they are not very loud they are of service that they're also very it's, it's of service and work duty but also of compassion and spirituality amongst other things as well but they're both of service in different way one is more mental one is more emotional but they are also both very, very sensitive signs. Just because you're not very showy doesn't mean that you're not strong. They're also very strong as well. I mean, where would we be without Pisces and Virgo? So we've just come out of the new moon, which was in Virgo, which was us really getting back to work, getting down to business, in a sense, college, work, taking care of ourselves physically, mentally and emotionally, also being quite anxious because we want things to be very, you know, diligent. But now we are visiting the moon, which is in Pisces. Again, Pisces and Virgos, they really help each other because Pisces is all about dreaming of what they would love to do. And Virgo is like, let's just do it. But before we do it, let's just plan. Let's make a a concise plan about what needs to be done virgo is oh i want it to look like this and pisces is like okay we can do that but just relax why don't you just do it and see how it is why don't you just free flow you know so they really do help each other it's no surprising when you see a virgo and a pisces in a relationship that it does tend to last obviously it's the general but it can last because they really do help each other. The sun being in Virgo is making us very, you know, I feel that a lot of us are very quite nitpicky anyway, in our own way. We could be diligently so. But when we have the moon, especially this full moon in Pisces, we are releasing this energy of you know, I'm I'm really concentrating, I'm really in control of this, but then I have to sort of like release it in order to see what I need to feel. Because there's an, a huge energy of emotion with this Pisces, very much a Piscean full moon. A lot of planets, a lot of energy is in this full moon, which it should be. Other themes that are coming up with this Pisces full moon is a lot of, and I feel for this whole Virgo season anyway, I'm sure that a lot of um, other tarot or astrologers have said it or spiritual people have said it. It's definitely to do with like money because of Uranus being in Taurus as well. But this one is more so there's going to be a huge emphasis on releasing our tight control when it comes to like our joint finances in some shape or form. Other, other, other things is not just joint finances as well is going to be to do the whole theme of finances saving spending lending loans debts and also our fears there can be a lot of fears that come up during this pisces new moon full moon i keep thinking new moon the next time we have a pisces new full moon or a new yes a full moon it's going to be saturn's going to be in pisces so it's going to be very different then. And again, I, I think I'm going to say it's for all the signs every time it's a full moon, every any time it's a full moon or a new moon. This is like the last chance Harvey into wrapping up a lot of crap 
that needs to be wrapped up because Aquarius, Saturn's leaving Aquarius. So this Pisces new moon is asking us to really delve deep into our fears and hopes and dreams, but also releasing in a way that we've never released before. This full moon can dredge up a lot of themes from the past. It can dredge up a lot of fears, anxieties. It can also make us feel quite up and down. And I'll tell you why, because the other planets that are involved in this is... Before I say that, I do feel also, because it's going to be such an um, emotionally intense full moon, I feel that a lot of us will, f on the outside, will be like, okay, I'm ready to face this full on. I'm not going to, you know, more or less like mess about. I'm going to be facing all of this full on. I'm going to go there. I'm going to, you know, make sure I'm putting like the work in and not, again, in a way, remember, this is mutable, cutting any corners, but making sure I'm putting, like, the work in. There's also an energy of groundedness to this as well. I do feel that during this full moon, a lot of, some of us will be make, making, like, concrete effort to, like, help ourselves in a way that we've never done before. And that may be because of the, you know, the wrapping up of Saturn being in Aquarius which is in Pisces 12th house. Some of us could be doing these things underneath, you know, very secretly, secretly, but others could be just projecting this, okay, let me just do this now. Let me just clear everything else out now. The planets, because the planets are always talking, guys, are always talking. They, I think that the planets give like a better, an overhaul, more or less a deeper message anytime these things happen so yes so the, we have it it's going to be sextile uranus uranus is talking uranus is whizzing in it's coming to the moon and it's just like bam oh change shock horror oh i was going to do this but then th th this happened and that happened um, I, I feel, I, I actually feel quite calm, but then I feel quite unstable, then I feel quite moody, I feel quite erratic, but also I know that I can change, there's going to be this energy for me to change, but then I still want to be grounded while I do this, and then we have the conjunct, it's sextiles Pluto as well, so that's going to be help, where it actually conjuncts Neptune, let's talk about Neptune, Pisces is ruled by Neptune, we had this major conjunction that was in Pisces for the next 13 years I know I keep saying this guys but it is very important whenever anything hits Pisces we have to bring up this conjunction because it's really going to be um, helping us to see why things are the way they are on a grand scale whether it's water finances our relationship whether it's the weather whether it's what we're eating, our bodies, is going to be affecting it all. So it does conjunct Neptune. We had a Jupiter conjunct Neptune. And this can really intensify our emotions in a, in a big way. It could also make us see that... Make us actually feel extremely more sensitive, more than usual. We could feel more psychic. A uh, lot our abilities can be very psychic. Uh, also, we can feel that you know it, it's a, when 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 I talk about sensitivity, I feel that we have to be very mindful of our aura because Neptune and Pisces is our uh, planets and signs that are not to do with. Um, it's very free flowing. It's got no boundaries, so we can enter in spaces where. We go into like situations that are not right for us, and after then we just soak up everything, and then we and then we ask ourselves why do we do? It? We can actually play the victim while this is going on, so we do have to be very mindful of who we surround ourselves with, um, any like energy vampires, but this is also given us, especially when we are releasing any energy or when you're doing your routine or rituals. The, the Neptune conjunction can help us with the psychic perceptiveness. 
it can also help us to raise our vibrations in a way that we've never ra raised it before we can also see different realms some of us could actually see what's going to be happening in the future especially if you're if you've got water heavy in your chart um but also this can make us feel that some of us may not want to see what's going on so we can also go to like the other side which is of addictions so let's be very mindful of that when that happens um because some of the things that we can see can be very ugly and because we're going to be feeling very sensitive but also very quite emotionally quite erratic as well it's good it's just going to be that sort of like push and pull of do i go there or do i not do i you know do i go there and release work with all my like deep traumas what's coming up or do i be very very strong to like see what's actually going on so that it can really help me to like move like to a next level like a higher realm so we can feel very complex emotionally we can feel very complex during this full moon we can also feel very some of us can actually feel like emotionally extremely emotionally i'm not going to say unstable you know because i feel that we all are in our own way when none of us are normal <laughs> yeah but we can also feel even more so like is this real is this not real you know what what is going on here um again like when i say addiction addictions in many forms it could be addicted to essential oils it could be addicted to drinking too much water it could be a lot of that you know so we all of us even myself have to be very mindful when we have a conjunction especially to like neptune um and also we have to also be mindful that we have to really see clearly because we may not be seen very clearly um we may want to see what we want to see we may want to see what we want to see but it's actually not real but on the other sense we will see things on how things actually are okay so it's going to be emotionally intense for a lot of us we also have which can actually help i feel is the sextile to Pluto. And again, it does bring out this emotional intensity for us, um, especially with our emotions. Um, on, a, on a good side, we can a lot of us can actually, it can actually help us purge anything that is stuck within us. Because, you know, I, I'm sure you've heard of this, that, you know, um, Pluto is like the vomit, like that needs to actually come out. So we can they, they can be like secrets that come out during this time they can be secrets to do with like your boss manager hires up all of that a lot of that can definitely come out but also on a personal level we can actually see where um we can also actually see where we have things or even people that we are close to they can be bringing out stuff that we have always wanted to hear, always wanted to, that we all, some of us already knew, but it actually does come out. And they, this, this, this can definitely bring us, this can definitely bring a time that we're going to be transforming ourselves. So whatever ritual you're going to be doing, Pluto can help you transform it. Like if you're, if you're, if you're used to doing certain things the same way, you might do it and it can be so powerful. And so releasing that, and it can actually make you like tremble, like, oh my God, I can't believe this is actually happening. Yes, there can be some conflicts along the way, because there's some things that we want to keep hidden. And when it comes out, it can cause drama. But it's all about, this is, this is about expressing ourselves. So there's a, there's a lot of, in, and also this can bring intensity. The intensity I feel during this full moon can be good or bad it can be intensity like you know your relationships or your emotions can be very deeper it can actually go deeper more even like spiritually deeper um some of you can find yourself a bit more caring like if you weren't caring before you could be more remember we're in the sun in the sun's in um the sun's in virgo and virgo is a sensitive sun but it's more so you know showing how you care by doing something to help it's not really like speaking emotions, 
But now we, some of us can find that we are speaking more of our emotion. We are communicating our feelings. And we're communicating how we feel, how we feel about you, how we feel about how the world is. So it can be more intensity, like your relationships could go deeper. Your, and it, it, it could be with anyone. It could be with, you know, you, if you have conflict with your child, it can actually be resolved. Or if you have conflict with your partner, it can actually be resolved. Things can get a bit more deeper. There can also be a deeper sense of commitment. But on the other hand, if you use it the wrong way, like the intensity, like I feel that I'm going to lose something, I can, you know, there might be this self sort of like manipulation that can come along. Like I'm not going to, I'm going to control my feelings. I'm going to say how I feel, you know, I'm going out. Will you go? You know, you can't go there. There can be that sense of like that darkness that happens. So this is about using it on the higher realm, higher vibrations, and not using on the lower, especially with the Neptune and the Pluto um, conjunction and sextile. So I feel that a lot of us during this full moon in Pisces are going to find that we're not, we may not feel the same again. And when it goes to the next full moon next year, it's just like, wow, what was that? So this full moon is going to be for the next six months. Now, thing I was going to say is that it's going, it's, this full moon's deacon is on the Venus deacon of Virgo. The Venus deacon, because all the deacons are very different. First, it's like the early is like double Virgo, then it's, then it's, uh, you know, then it, it changes. So, and it's Capricorn, the middle one. And after then it's on the last one is Venus, because it's all like the earth signs. So this Venus deacon is showing us that, you know, we're coming to that end of like the Virgo season, end of a cycle. But with, with it's like a Taurus, things can be a bit more, they, they won't be more, we won't be, we won't be feeling a lot more afraid of how we're going to be expressing ourselves because of that Venus energy. There's going to be, and it, it can also feel a little bit more softer, maybe because of the other planets, but it can feel a little bit more softer into what's coming out. So we're going to be taking care of ourselves more. This Pisces full moon is urging us to be taking care of ourselves, especially emotional, spiritual, and mental. Another thing I was going to say about the conjunction is that we can also feel that the need to be grounding ourselves in a very spiritual way, but through meditation, through yoga, through stretching, through swimming. With Virgo, it's about grounding in the earth doing grounding exercises, you know, Pilates, even yoga as well, um, walking, running, bar work, very grounding. But with this Pisces one, it's like dance, a lot of free flowing. If we need to release our energies in any way, things like dance can help, things like meditation. Um, if you're not into yoga, you can do stretching like eccentrics, um, meditating, like doing chakra cleansing work as well uh reiki could definitely help because even though we're going to be emotionally inclined to be doing this we can we some of us can actually have good expectations to do it and we just forget to do it so if you can try to do some of these it will be great because it will actually help us to when it goes next in the next six months and also when Saturn goes into Pisces, because it is wrapping things up, it's also showing us what have we learned, what have we engaged in. So all of these themes, that these are some of the things that you can do. I've actually personally incorporated some of these, especially like the Reiki, um, Chakra as well. I love Reiki and Chakra together. They really do help. Yeah, so... It is on the Venus Deacon, so it is also helping us. It is also showing us that, you know, self-care is going to be very important. Um, Our money, what we're eating, um, even how, like, when it comes to, like, the whole beauty thing, it's going to be in a more beauty thing in a more Piscean way. So when it comes to, yeah, so those are the things, because my mind is really, like, buzzing right now for some strange reason. Um, It will affect all the last, degrees of Pisces so if you're like 25 to 29 degrees you would definitely feel this the same with Gemini if you're last degrees of Gemini um, last degrees of Sagittarius and last degrees of Virgo okay 
So it's very much a um, emotionally intense time for a lot of us. When it comes to the tarot, because it's it's 18 degrees, 18 in the tarot is the sun card, which is going to be, is very illuminating, it's very highlighting, it's very creative, it's very positive. But I feel this is going to be highlighting all these emotions that actually need to come out, highlighting the need to reinvent, re-change the way we're thinking and feeling. There's going to be this huge mountains of pushing to bring it all out into the open. And we're going to feel better for it. The other card is the... I've actually switched it up, actually. The other card that we have is the chariot card. And the chariot card is actually a cancer card. And it is to do with us overcoming obstacles that we could be feeling. It's because a lot of us are going to be having to deal with certain things that we've been buried underneath. So the chariot being here as well is going to be showing us that, yes, there are things that we need to work on emotionally, things we need to let go of and release, there's things that we need to purge very deeply, especially especially because Pluto's here. But also we're going to be determined to, we're going to be showing, we're going to be showing and willing to see another side to ourselves. This is about willpower and control. So there's going to be an element of control, but we need to know what to control and what we need to bring in, what we need to also bring out. And also this is about us working hard as well, because some of us can find we have to really work hard with what's going to be coming into our lives during this full moon. The other card we have is, where's the other card? The other card that we do have, because it's on the 10th of September, is the wheel of fortune and the wheel of fortune is about things changing in motion with and it and things can happen whether we want it to happen or not it's also a very karmatic time so this full moon can feel very karmatic there can be things that come into our lives there can also be themes that come in from the past which i spoke about not long ago that we're going to be having to face but also we can also see, I'm also feeling that there's going to be a bit of a deja vu moment as well. Like, I've seen this before, uh, you know, maybe because of Neptune's involved, but it, they, they can feel like a huge deja vu moment. Like, this has happened before. This dream has happened before. This person's come into my life before. What's going on now? Do I, you know, how how can I make this work? How can I banish this? So yes, we can feel very, it's very karmatic, very psychic time because there can be things that come back into our lives from the past or things that we even imagine it actually happens. But then it might happen in a different way as well. So we need to also try to work with these changes that happen again emotionally. Okay, so these are the cards that we are working with. Obviously, we're working with the moon card, which is the Piscean card. But we revisit that, you know, once a year, if like that. Yeah, we, we, we are revisiting it now, but, you know, we more or less revisit it in February and March, okay? So those are the cards. When it comes to the Oracle messages, guys, the three cards I have is giving and receiving, fresh air and the ocean. So... Again, Pisces is a sign that does serve and it gives, it's very charitable. It also opens up its mind and also its heart. It's a sign that has no boundaries. So we can be a lot of doing, a lot of giving and receiving here. Okay. And <clears throat> this card is also showing about health, energy, balancing ourselves. Again, coming back to balancing our chakras balancing our spiritual needs giving but also receiving some people will come may come to help us we need to be open to that and not just keep giving because sometimes when we keep giving we it can actually deplete our um our feelings it can also make us feel very emotionally like not even stagnated but more like we're giving all of our energy and we have nothing left for ourselves. 
So giving and receiving is giving, but also be willing to accept, but also be open to have those sort of boundaries of having that balance of, you know, giving and receiving. I give, I receive, and I make sure I look to receive as well. Fresh air, again, it's about the body. So grounding ourselves in a way, some of you may be, you know, the watery of the of the dancing or swimming um it may be too much for some of you some of you may need to keep grounded because we are in virgo season as well we're coming towards the end of virgo season but still we are in virgo season so getting fresh air because emotions can be running very high this time so open up your curtains especially like in the morning receiving the sun <laughs> you know um being around greenery going to the park putting your feet in the earth smelling the flowers as well <clears throat> this can help us ground some of you may be guided to like really refresh your home as well with essential oils and you know grounding essentials i'll be coming to that in a minute so yeah, so grounding ourselves in any way possible, whether it's through the emotions or through the earth. Then we have the ocean, speaking of that. And it says about the ocean is speaking to our soul. It can actually help us, help smooth us. So if you don't live near the sea, which I don't, um, being around like uh, the ponds, for instance, or having like a nice bath, nice Epsom salt bath, um look you know going to like the aquarium which we have in london like the london aquarium being around fishes being around the ocean um we have the thames river jesus christ but we do have like rivers in london so yeah going around the ocean because some of you could actually find in a very crazy way not a crazy way but in a very different way you could find that the ocean is actually speaking to you you can some of you could actually hear <clears throat> things through the ocean even having like shells like seashells you can put it on your ear and you can hear some voices you can actually hear the sea but if you're lucky enough to go to places like cornwall there's some places in the uk that have like the sea that's really a great place to be as well you know dipping your feet taking care of your feet as well like having epsom salt Take, you know, dipping your feet in Epsom salts and with essential oils. And yeah, again, essential oils with an Epsom salt bath. And you can, you know, have your tablet with you, you know, and just put on some like smoothing music. And you can imagine yourself in the sea. So the ocean in the sea is definitely going to be calling us. Also, listening to your dreams, they'll be more prevalent during this time because we have that conjunction to Neptune. We can actually hear messages that we need to hear. When it comes to your essential oils, guys, um, I, again, my favourite, lavender. I personally, I'm going to be using lavender consistently. I use it every day. Um, bergamot is also good as well. During this Pisces full moon, we may not feel as energized. So, <clears throat> um, I'm 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 think I'm feeling lime will be good. Lime, lemon, mandarin. These are very um, citrus oils. They're very um, energizing for us. Um, they can also make us feel a bit more, you know, quite passionate, quite creative, but also. You know, our headspace is going to be a bit more better, be a bit more clearer. But yes, things like bergamot and because bergamot is, you know, is really good to help in like balance emotions, even like clary sage as well. But I'm thinking bergamot and lavender, which is really good. It helps like balance things emotionally, which a lot of us are going to be needing as well. We can also see that, you know, again, anything can be possible once we are balanced emotionally. Okay, so that's a bit of a long one for this Pisces full moon. I felt I nearly had, I really had to go in because the next time we're going to be visiting the full moon, Saturn's going to be in Pisces as well. And who knows what that's going to bring. Okay, so now let's go to the signs. 
So we're going to start off with Aries, because you know you're the firstborn. So Aries, this Pisces full moon is going to be in your 12th house. And yes, a lot of energy and action happening, but still a lot of you could be feeling pretty tired as well. Feeling like that whole energy of wanting to be alone, wanting to hibernate, hibernation is going to be of the main theme for you but still so a lot of you are going to still be, be very busy when it comes to like your career and when it's concerned like your finances this is a release in time so there could be a release of a career some of you may be really purging and thinking about how your career is going if you're earning enough if you're saving enough as well so even though you're going to be hibernating you're still going to be very on like your mind's going to be very much on your job your career and how much you're earning and there could be you some of you could be letting go of a career starting a new one or having like a side hustle you know Pluto being in your 10th is giving you that thing of okay I might I it's, it's actually making you see if you're happy or not um if you've progressed some shape or form and Pluto is going to be leaving, so we're going to your 11th house soon. So this is a case of, you know, let's do this. Yeah, let me make that move. Let me make that money move or let me make that move of doing something for myself, something that I love, something that I want to do. So, yes, but essentially, of course, a time of resting, really take those naps if you can, Aries. Try not to push yourself too much. You may find yourself a little bit tired at work as well your energy is is, is not going to be there so again work with your energy um you know even working out you might not be working out as much so doing something very low impact and also you know your mind also there can be some worry that comes up especially when it comes to like your career and that so you know your intuition and your dreams again they could be giving you some insight so try and listen to them so the card the oracle card i've pulled out I was, I was going between oracle or these other cards but the oracle card has spoken to me which is very creative so this one is detox time so the 12th house is about releasing and the undoing but it is about it is, it is a sense of detoxing as well so this card is about releasing detox from your body mind through your diet but also through your fears and your thoughts so this card is guiding you to detox anything that's going to be hindering you in any way, Aries. And you'll feel more lighter for it, especially when the full moon goes into your first house. There's a lot of releasing during this full moon. But this releasing is going to be beneficial to your career and your money. Taurus. You, you're going to enjoy this, definitely going to enjoy this, because this full moon is in your 11th house, which is about your goals, dreams, friends, group organisations, and also to do with games. You've got the nodes that are playing up as well, and the nodes is in your first house, so you could actually feel like you're the star of the show in some shape or form. But um, there's going to be this realisation during this full moon for you, in terms of like, you know people that you surround yourself with and some of you could actually want to be around a different kind of group or organization there could be a release of it um some of some of the people that you surround yourself with tourists they could be draining you and you may want to move away it might take you a while because you know you're very stable earthy um, um sign that is very um i was gonna say faithful Yes, you're faithful, but you're also very loyal. So it's about looking at who you are surrounding yourself with. Are they benefiting you or hindering you? And, you know, with the nodes being in your sign, your first and seventh house, um, this is going to be playing a lot on how it's going to be benefiting yourself, but not in a selfish way. It's just so that, you know, you don't have any stress or drama in your life. And if you, some of you might feel during this time, that there is a bit of stress and drama so you may want to move away from it but you may not know how to so tap in to something if, you, if you're doing anything spiritual which i wouldn't be surprised if a lot of tauruses are 
but you know you've got the polluter in your ninth house this is going to be your guide this is about spirituality um i feel that reading spiritual books doing manifestation work gratitude work that whole higher vibration of jupiter being there will really help your goals also are going to be changing so if there's an old goal that you that that you've left you may come back to it it could be you being a writer it could be something to do with publishing it could be something to do with the law as well but also this is something that's come back it's probably from 18 years ago for a lot of you tauruses so really tap into that it might just spring up on you when you're working hard at your job or even daydreaming but this is going to be changing your goals as well which is also a really good thing so if a lot of opportunities come up now taurus you know see what see what is what is really catching your eye so you have motivation and this card is about basically saying you know if you find and you're not I, even though it says pray for guidance i feel some of you may be needed to be motivating yourself into going to that higher realm of your profession or even like your something that you've always liked to do something that you've always left at the back corner and now you have to come back to so you might need a lot of motivation to move forward okay and focus as well um try not to go back to the back to the old school try to go to like the new so this is actually a good card it's about you focusing on something for yourself but something for the long term as well because you know taurus you are always about the long term gemini this full moon is in your 10th house yes the highest house so again a little bit like aries it could be you looking at your career there could be a release of a career some of you could be going back to one or leaving one anything can happen this will definitely affect you because you know you're mutable um, all the mutable signs are definitely going to be affected by this but yes so there may be some fears that come up during this full moon gemini um there could be some insecurities that come up about your your job your dream job um some of you could be fearing a bit like oh i'm not really sure if you know are, are people actually see me for what i'm about um you know there could be fears that you might i don't know probably get fired or just you know you may you may be thinking that you may be thinking that people are not thinking you're working hard enough or you yourself if you work for yourself you may not think that your career is growing the way that it should you know you've got the with the um polluter in your eighth house this actually does bring up fears all other fears that can come up is to do with like money may not be thinking may not be earning enough you may be spending there could be also like money going out and nothing's being saved in so it's really great to be talking to someone whether it's you know your partner or whether it's someone that's a professional which can actually really help you but you know it, it, it can actually feel during this full moon that there might be a, might be feeling a bit of a midlife crisis that comes up you know there may be things that are seen that you're seeing it may not be true or may or things that you're not seeing that also may be true as well so again because you've got um the node in your 12th house this is about tapping in to you know your that emotional heart space that a lot of you may not like to tap into because this can give you more of a again a bit like you is a bit more of a deeper insight and seeing things for what it is as well so this card you have is deserving and it's saying you know you basically you're deserving of happiness health and love so the job that you have gemini you are deserving of it as long as you're doing like the right thing as long as you're doing you know you're not cutting any corners in any way you know you're you're good at what you're doing you know you may have you may even find this month that you have you know your eye on different projects as well so look at the project look at a certain project or projects that you really enjoy um and know which one is going to be benefiting you i know which one is not okay because when it's the 10th house the 10th house is going to be shining that light on you and if you're not happy in your job gemini 
you know there's a lot of opportunities out there for you and you yourself can create it but know that you are deserving cancer so you cancer you're going to enjoy this as well because it's going to be benefiting like you know most of the signs especially the earth and the water so this is in your ninth house which is about your belief systems law publishing you know far away distance so this is a nice one for you cancers you could be releasing some old belief systems that you no longer need you could be surrounding yourself with certain people and their beliefs may not be aligning with you so you may just like bounce from them and just you know try and find a way to be surround yourself with people that are aligning with what you are definitely about that's 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 what the main thing is you know you've got pluto in your seventh house it is easing out so you know your relationships are coming to the fore i feel your relationships with your friends your relationships with yourself relationship could be relationship with god something that you've that that you've not that you love but something like relationship with your life with your beliefs are going to be playing a big part with this and i feel that some of you may even go back to it could be church it could be like going back to prayer um i also feel a lot of you may feel that you need to be a bit more protected during this full moon you've got neptune that's involved and um you know some of you may feel that you know when you walk when you're in a space or an organization you may feel like really exposed you may be wanting a bit more protection so doing any spiritual work you know with tarot cards or prayer um, meditation can really help as well um and what i don't necessarily see fears coming up i just feel that some of you just may feel that you there's things that are not aligning with you anymore and it could make a lot of you feel extra sensitive um some of you could also feel a little bit insecure when it comes to like your relationships as well you might not feel that you have that connection um so the connection i'm feeling here is that it's not a, there may not be that big connection with your partner or with your groups so and this may be just to, this this may be just you feeling it um or just maybe a bit of insecurity or you know, so I do feel like spiritual work will really help. And it could be any type of spiritual work. Um, grounding yourself will really help you as well. But I think overall cancers, there's going to be a huge shift in your mindset. And I feel that once you make one move, everything else is going to be changing for the better. So the card you have is nurture yourself. So it's about investing in self-care. And it will give you, it says, invest in time and self-care will give you more energy for later. So, again, like I said, doing some spiritual work, doing some grounding work, taking care of yourself as well. Because when Neptune's involved, it can make things seem what it's not. It can be quite an illusion. So, I feel that once you ground, things will just actually just become clear. But also, I feel with um, some of you cancers that, you may be changing during this full moon especially when you're doing like that um the full moon ritual you can have like this eureka moment that can definitely come for a lot of you as well but this card is saying nurture yourself and in any shape or form that can help leo this is in your eighth house so an emotional house for you leo very much an emotional time the eighth house is to do with your joint finances, fears, rebirth, death and rebirth, also debt, loan. So a lot of you could be working on that. Um, it could be a brand new beginning for this as well. Okay, it, this, this could be a time where you guys pay off everything you need to pay off or even thinking of doing it. And, and miraculously, <laughs> you know, this can really happen. So I feel a lot of you are going to be very organized or trying to be very organized during this full moon because you've got Pluto which is in your six which is about routines so time to setting up routines setting up like a standing order to pay off anything um, or even someone paying you back as well this is definitely to do with your partner so there, there could be a lot of these conversations going on and also again because it's such an emotional time you may feel a bit on edge so 
doing some type of physical fitness will really help you looking into something holistic something that can ground you going into the i say the earth but going into nature can really help it can clear your mind especially if things just get just too much you know if, you know you're you could be obsessing over something during this full moon and you just need to clear your head so doing any workout i feel and also watching what you're eating will really and truly help you as well but you know the nodes are in your 10th so this is to do with your you know your career so your career is going to be playing a big part they could again there could be a, you could be releasing something um there could be a change within your career which can actually change your finances and it could also change your routines so yes for you leos you could find it i wouldn't say hard i just find it some of some some of you can find it a bit a little bit challenging that you may have something set in stone and it may not work out that way so again i feel fitness will help everything it'll just clear your mind so you can just think straight so you've got blocks the card you've got is blocks lifted and it's saying that there's gonna be obstacles any, any obstacles that you're fearing during this full moon is about fear and they will be lifted and i feel that lift any fears that you've got i'm telling you if you if you if you're around nature if you're doing something you know just taking care of your physical body will really help any um fears that come because the eighth house can bring up fears it can bring up obsessions and some of this could be to do with the past so once you work on that everything will be lifted okay virgo so again you're mutable every mutable that i talk to you're going to be feeling this so this is in your seventh house okay and this is due to your relationship business or personal and contracts as well so this is going to be playing a huge part there's going to be a release in this it could be more deeper conversations some of you could move on some of you could really commit um some of you will actually see how your partner truly and really is it can be a realization of again wanting to commit or wanting to just distance yourself because i feel that truth may be coming out during this full moon and some of you may decide that you want to have a bit more fun in your partnership like having date nights um if you've got children as well this could be playing a big part coming up there could be a realization of i actually want more kids or i need to have fun with my kids a bit more i need to connect more with my kids i need to connect more with my partner you know some of your kids if some of your kids are older they could be moving away now but this will actually leave you time to be concentrating on having fun with yourself like in terms of creativity um something creative that you want to do some of you may be doing some creative partnering with your partner not in that way but just like you know doing something that that can benefit you and your partner it could be building a business like a creative business you know two heads more or less are better than one and again there's going to be a huge realization and there's going to be like a change within you like i should have done this a long time ago why didn't i do this now you know but sometimes virgos some things come in when they're supposed to come in you know and with the the nodes being in your ninth house this is you know open up your mind to like different things and i i, I just got this vision of some virgos just like looking on the internet and looking at like properties from abroad so some of you could be looking at like a house abroad like a, it, it could it could also be like a um a holiday home that you could go to you and your partner or, or even you and your kids somewhere you can have fun somewhere you can kick back and relax some of you also may decide that you're just going to bite that bullet and just study study that project study you know do something that is going to be beneficial but you know i do feel that a lot of you virgos are coming to this huge you know your recall realization that you know fun is going to be helping and if your relationships in any way is lacking that you're going to be seeing it now so the cards oracle card you got is success it says congratulations you did it so you know you did it you, you've you've let your hair down you're opening up a little bit more 
um, you're seeing your partner for whether it's good or bad. You're seeing things for what they are in your partnership. Your your mindset is changing. I mean, what else do you need? So regardless of how things go, Virgos, you know, congratulations. You know, things are coming to plan. Libra, this is in your sixth house. Libra, this might feel for a lot of you that you're going through this conjunction that happened in april you know because it's in your sixth house which is about you know your routines and your health so this is shine that light on it i feel a lot of you librans are going to be having this sort of like midlife thing of okay i've not done it i'm gonna do it now and i know that sounds strange but that's how it feels like i'm actually gonna do that workout i'm actually gonna you know, because some of you may be doing lots of walking or hiking or, you know, doing the workouts or, you know, taking care of what you're eating. But there may be like the thing of you believe you're doing the best and you're not doing the best. So it's like, I'm just going to do it now. I'm just going to start stretching. I'm going to start, you know, being a bit more consistent. But it doesn't have to be strict. It just has to be in a way that helps you. OK, because you know and also there can be an obsession with this remember you've got like the eighth house which is happening as well you've got the fourth house which is pluto so some things are really coming to home for a lot of you like this is huge in a way like a bit of a ground in this like if you don't do this now then you know you can see that it's not going to be beneficial to you in the future so whatever you plan to do now, Libra, in terms of like your routine, even your, your work as well, now is really the time to do it. Um, any habits that are hindering you in any way now, you know, I feel that some of you may look at it and think it's actually hindering me in some way. It's not making me be more productive at work. And yeah, your health and wellness is really much highlighted during here. And even if you feel that you may have to go back to the drawing board, some of you may be looking at like your parents, how they used to treat themselves or how they used to live or how they were organised. And you may be thinking, mm, it worked for my parents. Let me try that too. You know, some of you could actually feel quite sentimental during this full moon. Um, yeah, I feel some of you could actually be very quite sentimental. Um, it could be to do with your parents because, you know, you've got Pluto in your fourth. And especially if you Librans are, especially if you Librans that are last degree, you know, it's it's actually easing out and going to your fifth. But it's just like, just look at this again. Um, look at what you're burying and look at what you need to um, face. OK, so if you've, it's not about you sabotaging yourself anyway, but if you just not treated yourself anyway, if you've just not like really looked into yourself, now is that time that's going to be happening. So the card you have is express your inner truth. So this card is a very creative card. It's about sh um, creative creativity shines bright when you reflect your genuine feelings and thoughts. So again, I talk about going back to the past because there may be things that you may be doing from the past and doing it now because it actually worked. Um, the sixth house is also to do with work as well. So, again, some of you, especially if you are very creative Librans, um, if you feel stagnated in any way, look at what you did in the past. Because I feel that, in a way, this can help you. And I say the past a lot because of the fourth house in Pluto. So, yes, very much an emotional time, but a huge realisation. Hello, Scorpio. So, you Scorpios may really enjoy this full moon. Because, you know, this is the, a fun house, a fifth house. But you could also be releasing something to do with all of these things. You could be releasing a creative project. You could be releasing and unleashing a fun side to yourself. You know, just releasing it, Scorpio. Having fun. Um, this is also to do with children as well. So there could be a birth of a child or a birth of a new project. Um, some of you could actually be gambling and you win some money, you know, miracles can definitely happen. We've got the nodes I see in your seventh house. So again, partnerships, relationships are definitely involved. And, um, I feel that obviously communication is going to be very effective. A communication is going to be key. Your mindset 
definitely something something's gonna be happening to you mentally during this full moon because Pluto in your third and you're also ruled by Pluto it's like you might have some sort of deep psychic insight to something something creative something you've missed like a secret um, something your partner's not saying something you could be hiding as well um anything that needs to be brought out now scorpio will be brought but essentially it is to do with having fun and this is great to be creative this is a great time to be unleashing a creative side to you you know tap into that mind tap into what is going on tap into what tap into what is wants to be unleashed now you know and i feel that inspiration could be anywhere it could be you when you're communicating with your partner, having like a heart to heart, because I feel heart to heart um, could potentially be coming out now, Scorpios. Could be fears that you have, could be insecurities. It could be it could be a multitude, it could be a multitude of things. I just said those things because a lot of you Scorpions can feel very intense when it comes to relationships. But yes, Scorpios, really tap in, have fun. Um, even if it feels like it's something out of your comfort zone, now is the time to have fun. And yeah, listen to what that mind is saying because there's some un there's something that is that needs to come out now, Scorpio. And I think some of you know what that means. And the card you have is media. And it's saying whatever you're gonna be doing, because I do feel a lot of Scorpions, I, I, I can feel a lot of Scorpions are gonna be like in the media now with something that they're doing, producing teaching so this card is about um the more you meet you reach and more people working through video audio print and online media so with polluta being in your third house which is to do with all of these a lot of you could be doing that a lot of you could be being very creative which involves the media a lot of you and also it's funny i say that because polluta and scorpio generation they're going for their third house action with it being in capricorn so you could just really bite that bullet and just do something quite fearless now. So just do it. And even if people don't really understand it, even if your partner doesn't understand it, or even you yourself may not understand it, just do it. Because you never know who can see it, and you never know it could change everyone's life, but also your own life. Sagittarius. So again, mutable. We're going to the mutable again. You are going to be feeling this, especially if you are mid degree Sagittarius so Sagis, this is in your fourth house an emotional house a house of coming home roots parents you know heritage a lot of these themes are coming up there could be a huge sense of releasing from these especially if you're doing any rituals I feel any rituals some of you Sagis may do will be very like going back to basics something you used to do in the past or something like your grandmother or your mother used to do, especially if they are very spiritual. Um, yeah, and, and this 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 can also feel very like you're coming home, in a sense as well. Um, some of you Sagittarians can also feel like really highly enlightened during this full moon, more so than ever. So let me know how that goes. So with you, Sagis, you have the nodes, which is in your sixth house. So it's about you setting up a routine when it comes to your home. So if anything needs to be decorated, anything needs to be fixed, it's all about getting organized and just getting on with it. Um, making sure that you're eating, you know, taking care of your health so that you can tend to the home. Um, some of you may find you're quite busy. Um, yeah, some of you may actually find you're quite busy, especially... Um, and also there may be funds, maybe you may be spending more money, but this is more to do with an investment more than anything. So really look at your, your finances, especially if polluter being in your second, really look at your finances. Um, they could be a bit, bit, bit more of a push to spend more on something for the long term, especially if it's to do with home. Um, remember to check in on your partner to see if they actually like it because you could just do something on a whim and then your partner's like, what have you done? Or even like someone in your family. So you may be looking to change something within the home. You may be re-overhaul everything. 
but I feel that your finance, you have to look at your financial situation, making sure you're not overspending, going overboard, over the top, and just being organised, making sure that, you know, if you're signing off anything, you're really looking at the small print. If you're, um, if you say you're going to do something, try and remember to do it. Um, but essentially, if there's a lot to do within the home, it's, it's great to make it like a, a concrete plan so that you don't just do what you want to do type of thing. So the card that you have is Mother Mary. And it's saying that basically it's a very spiritual card. I feel that, like I said before, a lot of you will be going to that higher realm. So if you feel that you need to pray for like guidance or if you feel that you need like help, really, you, if you call it out, it can actually happen. It could be from your mum. It could be from your grandma, um, you know, because some of you may feel that you need help this during this full moon. Like, you know, I just need help just to just get on with this. I need help to I just need help to fix this. And, you know, um, if there's if if there's any drama at home, you know, a lot of you will be seeking that solid send, asking for help in any shape or form. So this is very much a spiritual card. Once again, Sagis, you know, it's about organisation for you. And some of you may feel a bit like, during this time, can, things can feel a very quite tense as well. Um, and that's probably more to do with things not moving fast enough. Capricorns, you're going to enjoy this because this is in your third house. Your thoughts, siblings, neighbours, you know, your neighbourhood. Um, writing, speaking, blogging, podcasting, all of that. So there may be something that you guys may be releasing to the world, especially if you're a writer, if you've got a blog, if you've got something to do social media, maybe releasing it now. Uh, or some of you may be thinking of doing it and you start doing it. You know, this is all a little bit about mind over matter and action. Mentally, you could be very sensitive as well be mindful of what you bring into your mind now capricorns because it can leave an impact you could feel very sensitive emotionally very very sensitive as well because you know the conjunction to neptune but i think what's helping you what will help you if you are feeling in your mind and you can't get certain thoughts out being creative will definitely help you know you've got polluter in your first which is transforming you from 2008 and some of you Capricorns may be feeling a sense of relief because, you know, you've gone through it for 15 years. I feel a lot of you Capricorns may be looking back as well from, from, from 2008, see how far you've come, what progress you've made, what mistakes you've made. Um, if you've been true to yourself or if you've been that, um, if you've been um, cutthroat in any way. There could be some, if there are any regrets that come along Capricorns, it's all about admitting it and, you know, trying to learn to move on. Um, I think a little bit like Aquarius, you may feel that um, some of you could be making amends a lot with friends. I go back to 15 years because we're, eight, we're easing out of your sign. So I feel a lot of you may be making amends. There could be lots of sorries and tears along the way. Some of you could also be contacting friends from the past or business associates. That could be happening. This could be involved in social media. If some of you find it hard to talk about your feelings, it's actually great to be putting it up on social media. Um, and most of this can be like a new creative outlet for a lot of you. But again, it's really nice time, but I do think it's very much an emotional time for you. So the card you have is sensitivity, and it's saying your sensitive feelings are your muse for inspiration for your creativity. Just what I said. You know, your anything that you put out there, anything that you feel guided to do, anything that, you know, because sometimes, you know, you say sorry to someone, it can be very embarrassing, or sometimes you're feeling very sentimental. You may feel that you want to put it out there, but you just don't know how. So tap into what your mind is saying, because Pisces ruling your third house is going to be mentally giving you that softness. It's also giving you that strong intuition and imagination. So tap into that. And we've got North Node in your fifth, which is helping with creativity and drive, encouragement and also confidence. 
to really tap into it. You can move a lot of mountains now, Capricorn, and because Pluto is moving outside your sign, history could be made as well. Aquarius, this is in your second house, which is your self-worth, money, okay, the money house, the Taurus house. And you've got the nodes, which is in your fourth. So, you know, there could be some Aquarius. I feel it's time to look at, you know, your your, your finances now, definitely. Maybe because it's a good thing that Pisces has been in your full moon because, you know, you've got Saturn, which is in your sign. And there may have, some of you may have overspent. I know Saturn's about restriction, but some of you may have overspent. It could be to do with your groups, your friends, but Pisces now is going to be asking you to sort of look at it. You could be over, how can I put it? It could be, you may think you've got more and you've got less. You know, Neptune's involved. So it can put that that mirage of, um, I was going to say miracles. It can put that mirage of um, illusion. So there could be something that you may have to pay. And it's, I do definitely feel, look at your finances really properly. Um looking at it in a sense of you know you may be moving banks maybe also putting it in something creative maybe putting it within the home you know and you've got Pluto in your 12th house so there may be some stuff that comes up from the past or something that needs to be released and in order for you to release it you have to look at it very you have to look at it properly okay you have to look at it properly it's not easy because you've got like water houses You've got an earth and water house which is going on. So this is going to be sort of like bringing you back down to earth um, in a way that you may have never felt before. Okay, so the tarot card you have is daily practice. And it's saying the more you practice your skills, the more comfortable and confident you become. The second house is the Taurus house, which is also creativity. So if you are looking to spend money on anything, it definitely something creative will help you. The second house is about your self-worth. So anything you spend on is to boost your self-confidence. Um, some of you may be tightening your belt, you know, maybe thinking, you know what, I've overspent on this and now I can no longer do this. The home is calling, of course, but also, um, you know, and, and also listening to your intuition will tell you a lot as well during this time. But when it says daily practice, I also feel daily practicing. If you're overspending looking to rein it in and also something for a rainy day for a lot of you as well so yeah i feel like a lot of you are going to be a bit just looking into things just a little bit more even though it can be quite hard but yes daily practice is key last but not least we have pisces now pisces this is the last time saturn's going to be in your 12th house okay and the next time you have this full moon in your sign it's going to be saturn's going to be in your sign so for you pisces i i've said this before i feel that you guys are really going to make this work making it work as in just get on with it don't procrastinate you know this this is this full moon's got duke what's got neptune it's got Pluto. it's got the nodes there so i feel that you guys may be feeling a little bit more ambitious more than ever you'll wrap up any um things that no longer serve you any um it could be traumas it could also be any habits it could also be any addictions that you have i feel you guys are really going to be not saying you're going to do it but i feel that you guys will be working on releasing it working on cleansing you know the first house is about the body so you guys may be definitely feeling like i'm gonna get you know fit and healthy you know sometimes when saturn's in the 12th Anything you'll do, especially for your physical body, it doesn't really release it until Saturn goes into the first. So I do feel anything, if you're trying to be healthy now, Pisces, and nothing's shifting, still do it. Because when Saturn goes into your first, you're going to see a different change. It's all about making baby steps. And, you know, with um, the node being in your, your third house, you know, this is going to make you a bit more single-minded, more a bit more stubborn. Um, what you're thinking and saying is going to be very, it's going to be felt. So if a lot of these things you may be saying to yourself, like, right, I'm going to cut down on drinking, cut down on smoking, cut down on this, cut down on that. You know, with Polluto being in your 11th house, 
is to do with your friends and your goals. So look at your friendships. Look at if they are helping you. Look at if you know if you say you're going to be doing something for yourself, and they're like, ah, oh, now it's not going to work. We really look at that. We really listen to what your friends are saying, because they're actually telling you a lot about yourself. There also could be some friends coming back to a lot of you Pisces. It could be from the past. Um, or there could be someone that comes into your life and they actually just say something and it makes like a, wow, I didn't think about that before. So this, this is a realization full moon. Also a lost full moon in order to get your together, I feel, before Saturn goes into your first. And also realize, really and truly realizing your dreams, especially if you're like last degrees Pisces, like 29 degrees, really realizing your dreams, really, it's not about doing everything at once and pushing yourself Pisces. As you know, we live in a new world. The world we live in is like working smart, not working hard. So doing little, little bits of like creativity or spirituality can help because you may be feeling very sensitive now also very emotional some of you may be feeling very sensitive in the body so um try not to push yourself physically do something very low impact like meditation or stretching like eccentrics will really help even pilates um also i'm feeling um mentally as well you might be feeling very tired so really try to be kind to yourself take care of yourself because yeah this full moon can move a lot of mountains for a lot of you Pisces. And the card you have is Divine Guidance. So it's just saying about ideas you're receiving, um, whether it's through prayer, whether it's through meditation, is like basically from the universe. So if you're feeling stuck in any way during this full moon, you know, sit with yourself, sit with your emotions. You know, you've got Saturn in your 12th, is, which is to do with, you know, the spiritual meditation and that. So really tune into that. One thing I'm also going to say to a lot of Pisces is that if you have been making conscious effort through force of will or through, you know, when you've either felt like it, but you're making little progress with any spiritual work, whether it's meditation or yoga or any type of that, continue to do it during this full moon because you guys can feel extra sensitive and extra potent. But also because Neptune's there, this can also make things... Um, quite hazy as well so you definitely will need to ground as well okay so that was the full moon in pisces for all of the signs don't forget to like share and subscribe feel free to let me know how this full moon has gone for you and yeah you know like i said this is a sensitive time for a lot of us but you know like what i said with pisces take care of yourself even, even myself included and yeah thank you very much guys for listening check out my september oracle oracle cast for all of the signs and i will speak to you soon take care bye